Okay, you've been learning about L'Hopital's rule in some of the previous videos. And this is a technique for evaluating limits of the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And you've learned how to do the calculations and it works amazingly well for these forms. But why does it work? It's kind of amazing really that the limit of f of x over g of x should be the limit of f primed of x over g primed of x. Why can't I just take derivatives separately in the numerator and denominator like this? So we'll have a closer look and see why th where this comes from. Keep in mind, though, that when I write this limit on the left equals this limit on the right, that's only true, really, when I have a 0 over 0 form or an infinity over infinity form here. Not if I have some other number over some other number, then it may not e equal this limit on the right. So I need something like f of c, limit as x goes to c, so I put plug c in f of c to be 0, and g of c also to be 0, and g prime of c not 0. So that says that I need the denominator on the right, after I've done the calculation, to be evaluating at something other than 0. Actually, in some of the other videos, you may have noticed that there's a more general form of L'Hopital's rule that allows g prime of c to be equal to 0 with some other conditions. Um, but let's not worry about that. We'll just look at the simplest form of L'Hopital's rule where we have this. And we'll only look for now at the 0 over 0 form. So we want to know how things like f of x over g of x behave in a limit. So what's the simplest kind of thing like that? Let's look at some examples. So I'll take the limit as x goes to 0, 4x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. There's my f of x over g of x. Well, the first thing you should always do is plug in x equals 0 and see what happens. So here I'm going to get 3 in the denominator. So it's not a zero denominator. There's nothing uh, difficult about this. In fact, this whole function, this whole quotient here, is a continuous function near x equals zero. So I can simply plug in x equals zero. And get minus 5 over 3 as my limit. Same sort of thing happens if I have something like, say, 4x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 as x goes to 0. Again, I can just plug in x equals 0 uh, because I don't have 0 in the denominator when I do that. So this is just 1 over 1, which gives me 1 for my limit. However, if I take the limit as x goes to 0, 4x plus 0 over 2x plus 0, now things are a little bit different. Of course, I didn't have to write the plus 0 here, but I want to make it look like the previous example, so you can see that it's the same kind of functions, but with constant terms, which just happen to be 0 here. But this limit, of course, is just the limit as x goes to 0 for x over 2x. And we know that when x is close to 0 but not 0, I can cancel those x's. So this is just 4 over 2, which gives me a limit of 2. Now I want to look at the pattern here a little more closely. Where does this minus 5 come from and where does this 3 come from? Well, here's the minus 5 and here's the 3. They're the constant terms in each of the functions, numerator and denominator. Well, this makes sense because if x is close to 0, the 4x is small in relation to the minus 5. So the numerator is close to minus 5. The denominator uh, is close to 3 because the 2x is small in relation to the 3. And in the limit, these become exact and we just get minus 5 in the top and 3 in the bottom. Same in the second example. Where does this 1 come from in this one? Well, they come from here and here. Again, it's the ratio of the constant terms that gives me the limit. The 4x and the 2x become insignificant as x goes to 0 in relation to their constant terms. 
Well, in the third example, where does this 4 come from and where does this 2 come from? Well, they don't come from the constant terms, which are both 0. That's why this example is different. They come from the numbers in front of the x, the coefficients of the x term in each case. So why should that be? Well, it's true that as x is close, gets close to 0, the 4x gets small and so the numerator is close to zero, but the denominator is also close to zero, and that doesn't really help us. In fact, what we need to know is how far from zero this is, and that's given by the 4x term. So the difference between the this example and the previous examples is that the 4x may be small when x is close to zero, but it's not small in relation to the constant term. In fact, this is something, even if x is quite small and the 0 is nothing, so everything depends on the 4x here and the 2x in the denominator. So it's the ratio of those that's going to determine the, the limit. Um, of course here 4x is always twice as big as 2x, so I'm going to get 2 for my answer. But if I don't have straight line functions top and bottom, if I have curved functions, then the limit, the uh, ratio may not all be a constant, but it may still have a limit. So this is what we want to investigate. So we want to think about now functions f and g that are not straight lines. Can we use some of the same ideas here? Well, we can if we use linear approximation. So I've drawn a little sketch here. Here's a uh, a function f that's curved and a function g that's curved, they both pass through the origin because I want the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x to be 0 and I want g of 0 to be 0 as well. Then I'll have a 0 over 0 form in my limit. I've also drawn in the tangent lines here to suggest that when I'm looking at the ratio f of x over g of x that this is going to be approximately the tangent line of f over the tangent line of g. So in other words, the height of the f of x function divided by the height of the g of x function, at least when I'm near x equals 0, is going to be close to the height of the tangent line over the height of the other tangent line. So we need to find the equations of those tangent lines. Well, we know how to do linear approximation. So f of x will be f of 0 because I'm going to find the tangent line at x equals 0 here, plus f primed of 0 times x. g of x will be g of 0 plus g primed of 0 times x. And this is like y equals mx plus b for the tangent line where the slope is the f primed of 0 and the intercept is f of 0. Of course my intercept here is 0 I have f of 0 equals 0, and also I have g of 0 equals 0. So in fact, these terms are both 0, so we can take them out. And then when I calculate the limit, as x goes to 0 of f of x over g of x, well, okay, I should have made this approximately equal to here and this approximately equal to here. These are only linear approximations. Um, but now I'm going to take the limit, so the, lim the approximations will become exact. So in the limit, this will equal the limit of, well, f of x becomes f primed of 0 times x. g of x becomes g primed of 0 times x. And just like I did with my linear example, my straight line examples above, x is not 0 but close to 0, so I can cross those out. And f primed of 0 is just a number, and so is g primed of 0. So that's my limit, f primed over g primed. So there's the L'Hopital's rule idea. The limit of f over g is f primed over g primed because those are determining how far from 0 the numerator and the denominator are respectively when I'm close to 0, when the constant term is exactly 0, as in my straight line example up here. 
and in fact the 4 and the 2 there are the derivatives of the 4x and the 2x. So this is this is L'Hopital's rule except that originally I had that this was supposed to equal the limit as x goes to 0 of f primed of x over g primed of x. But that is the same as that. I can If I can plug in x equals 0 here and here, then it'll give me this. And I can do that when my g primed of, of 0 is not 0. Uh, 